All right, this quick video is going to go over finding consumer surplus without a graph. And uh, ultimately, the trick here is to just find your willingness to pay and subtract the price paid. But we'll go through some examples uh, of how this could work um, when it does work, when it doesn't, kind of reading the question carefully to make sure you understand it correctly. So for the example I'm going to look at here, uh, we'll start with our hero named Sam. And let's imagine Sam is going to buy some tacos. Uh, we can imagine that the market price or the price paid for the tacos is going to be two dollars. And so this is important information because that's what Sam pays for the tacos. Now in order to answer this consumer surplus question we have to figure out what the WTP or the willingness to pay is. So what is Sam willing to pay for the tacos? And typically, if we're familiar with demand curves, we know that the first taco is going to have the highest willingness to pay. So let's say that for the first taco, let's get a willingness to pay of $4. And now, let's say for the second taco, there could be a willingness to pay of some value lower than that. Let's go for 3 And then the third taco, there could be a willingness to pay of two. And then, for example, let's say we ask Sam how much are you willing to pay to consume that fourth taco. She responds with a willingness to pay of one dollar. So the trick here is, uh, what is Sam's consumer surplus from buying these tacos? And the trick here is to first find the equilibrium of how many tacos Sam's going to consume. So we can look at the first taco and the willingness to pay. Willingness to pay is four. She only has to pay two, that's awesome. When we calculate the consumer surplus, we take the willingness to pay minus the price paid. So that's four minus two or two. The consumer surplus for the next taco is gonna be three minus two or one. And then finally, for the last taco, we will have 2 minus 2 equaling 0. So when we consider the total consumer surplus for Sam and tacos, it's going to be equal to $3. Now, it's possible that the question could say, OK, assume that she pur purchases this fourth taco. Well, in that case, we would have a willingness to pay of 1 we would subtract the price paid of two, and she would have a negative consumer surplus of one, meaning that the total consumer surplus would be only $2. Um, but that's kind of a trick question. I don't think you'll see too many questions like that uh, in your econ classes. Most will give you something simple of, okay, this is the willingness to pay of the different amount of tacos or any good or service really, and this is the price in the market that's going to be paid for it. So again, calculating consumer surplus without a graph, remember willingness to pay minus price paid. Those are your two important bits of information. After that, really, it's just a plug and chug. Take your willingness to pay, take your price paid, add up those values, and then you're done.